Joe Dyroth, better known as The Brow, died of a stroke last night. He was 74, the father of nine, and a man that put the F.A.N. in fan. Airports, ballparks, it didn't matter. The Brow was everywhere. Give me an A! What do you got? Louder! It, it's really an amazing thing to be able to have young people uh, relate to an old man. Are we in it? It didn't matter. You see, Joe Dyroff was there anyway. Clapping, dancing, carrying on, Tigers, Pistons, whatever. He was part of the show. Was he crazy? Uh, well, it must be a little bit. Give me a T! You go! Da! But you know, there's one thing about being crazy. Nobody bothers you. Pop it up! I don't know, he always had a saying with uh, mustard and relish or something. Uh, I can't remember quite how it goes, but he had a lot of sayings for everything, and he'll be uh, deeply missed. And... Out in the aisles! Do anything! I just feel that I belong there. TV2! TV2! Eyewitness Sparks! Eyewitness Sparks! Beautiful! Nice stuff. You know, I'm, I'm new, so I never got to meet the man, but nice I have guy. heard of him before, and uh, putting the piece together was uh, was a kick in the pants. I can imagine what it was like to be at the ballpark with a guy. Terrific guy. Yeah. A very bright man, too. Don't, uh, let, yeah. don't let him fool you about that crazy yeah. stuff. Father of nine, he was very a school bright. teacher, I understand. Yeah. Wow, sure. yeah. This guy, Joe Dyruff, never hit a game-winning jumper for the Pistons or a home run for the Tigers or a touchdown for the Lions, but he was a big part of Detroit sports scene. Joe was better known as the Brow. Well, he passed away last night. But as Eric Smith tells us now, the Brow will forever be remembered as the ultimate Detroit cheerleader. One, two, three, let's hit it. Strawberry shortcake, gooseberry pie, B-I-C-T-O-R-Y. Here's one. He was simply one of Detroit's most unusual characters. Arguably, for a time, this town's most visible sports enthusiast back in the late 1980s and early 90s, his name was actually Joseph Dyroff, a teacher, a Navy veteran of the minesweepers of World War II, just a real hometown guy who took some knocks in life and turned the world of sports into his own personal parable of life. He could quote Confucius just as easily as St. Augustine, but he was more likely to be screaming at the top of his lungs, screaming words of encouragement to his hometown heroes. You are part of that team! To be perfectly honest, Brow, as he was nicknamed, irritated more than just a few fans with his unorthodox style of cheerleading. More than once, he was told to sit down. But hey, he was there at 90% of the Red Wings and Pistons games, and how many other fans can say that? Pictures and memories from a high school yearbook. I first met Joe Dyroff in 1960. We met again in the late 1980s when he was Brow's, the super fan. The first time? Well, he was my 10th grade geometry teacher. I think he gave me a D minus. Probably why I'm in television today. Joe Dyroff, the super fan, he was one of a kind. I'm Eric Smith, Channel 7 Action News. One of a kind indeed. Absolutely. I know it sounds cliched, but he will certainly be missed and by a lot of yeah. people, athletes in particular. Oh, they loved him. And, and he, win or lose, especially lose, yeah. you know, they'd say, gee, I wonder if the Brow's going to be there to cheer us <laughs> on. And he'd always be there. You know, no sometimes it, 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 when the Lions charter would come in late, mm -hmm. you know, the weather's bad, 2 o'clock in the morning, there's the Brow with a little sign out there, you know, welcoming the plane back. Not just there. a fair weather fan. No, he, not he at was all. He's a real fan. Okay. But one of the metro area's best known fans is not here this opening day, Joe Dyroff. The Brow is now leading cheers in heaven. The team had a moment of silence in his honor. He loved the game. I know he did, but I did too. We all loved it. All the kids are here. They're doing good. We're really trying it, you know. We're here for Joe. He, he would be walking back and forth through the aisles and trying to get people to cheer. He'd be carrying his ketchup and mustard and relish bottles saying little cheers like we can't catch up or they can't cut the mustard. And the only thing better than the annual opening day is opening day when they win. I'm, I'm very excited. Tigers are great this season. I predict Tigers. winning season. We won! <laughs> opening day! We won! I can't believe it! <laughs> Final score was 10-4 to 4 and the fans are just hoping 
that they can keep it up. Yeah. That would be nice, Mary. Oh, it would be. Thanks a lot, and our best to the Dyroff family, too. If you've been to a Tiger, a Piston, or a Red Wing game, you probably recognize him. There's been enough stories done about him. But they have all been done about the brow. Super fan. Now I want you to meet the man and what makes him tick. For 26 years, Joe Dyroff was a teacher, a man who believed in teaching the whole student. A few years ago, the bottom fell out. Joe was forced to retire. Fridays, I always uh, I would say to the kids, have a nice weekend. Go home and help Ma and Pa and go to church if you got one to go to. Well, I got uh, reprimand on that. Why? Well, <laughs> separation of church and state, I guess, and so forth. <laughs> Joe went into deep depression, a depression that lasted a couple of years until... I decided, well, God, what talent did you give me that I can use to help people or to entertain? And it comes to mind that I'm a, a cheerleader for 49 years. Basketball, baseball, hockey, it's Joe's way of dealing with what life has dealt him. Why does he do it? Simple. Anytime you're doing what you think is right, you've got a satisfaction coming. He feels good doing what he's doing, even though some people may think it a bit strange. Joe persists. Problems? Sure, sometimes. A guy up in Toronto, a uh, big guy, about the biggest refrigerator, he, uh, he put his fist in my face and he said, uh, uh, get out of this section. He says, or you're going to get this right in the mouth, you know. I thought I could outrun him while he, he couldn't even get out of the chair. <laughs> <laughs> Take it away! Behind it all lies reason. All the signs you've made, all the messages that you've put on paper, what's your message for fellow man? I feel my generation should be doing everything possible to prepare the next generation for what's coming up. And that does not mean retiring and sitting in the rocket chair and watching the idiot to him. I can't do that. I don't feel that's right. Joe Deroff, the brow, a man with a strong belief who spends hours at his mission. What drives him? A uh, statement made by Edmund Burke back in the 1800s. He was a British statesman and uh, uh, historian. And that statement goes, all that is necessary for the triumph of evil is that those of good intentions do nothing. And that's something Joe won't do. If you have a thought, you think it's a good one, work on it, Joe says, and it will work for you. Joe Deeroff, happy, fulfilled, well? Uh, not exactly. And the reason why I say that is because I have not succeeded in uh, getting people to fire up at the beginning of the game and thereby firing up that team. And do nothing. Joe Deeroff, truly a man on a mission. Complex, yet very simple in what he dreams for. Y'all have a pleasant evening. And you might mention Joe Dyroff in your prayers tonight. Detroit's super fan is in Grace Hospital recovering from a massive stroke. The beloved Brow, the most dedicated cheerleader in this town, suffered the stroke last week. He is in the intermediate care unit at Grace Hospital. We wish Joe all the best. And uh, Joe, these teams in town need you, man. So uh, yeah, right. get yourself yeah, uh, well and uh, get back out there cheering. He's given a lot to this town. He really has. Years. He's a special guy. He is. Yeah. You know when the Lions would come back on their buses and you know, the flights, he'd be out there with all the signs that we're proud of you, and he'd could, be the only one out there. It could be yeah. two in the morning, and Joe's there. <laughs> He's there and how yeah. many snoozers did he wake yeah, up in absolutely. real bad games? He'd keep it interesting. Yeah, you get better. Well, oh, if I want to work for him, <laughs> holy cow, talk about Canada, Gamera. Well, Detroit is saying goodbye to the ultimate fan. He is the brow. Fox 2 Detroit Free Press commentator Rich Alvin explains why Joe Dyroff was so, so very important to Detroit sports teams and fans. The sports world lost an important figure Thursday. He never scored a touchdown or jammed a basketball, never coached a team, and certainly never owned one. His name was Joe Dyroff. He was 74 years old, and most people called him the brow because of his bushy eyebrows. What he was was a fan, a super fan, really, wearing crazy hats and ties, waving cardboard signs, leading cheers. Give me an
He cheered when the team won, and more importantly, he cheered when it lost. He went to hotels and airports, often paying his own way, just to root the team on. He wasn't a groupie, he didn't collect autographs. He was simply a kindly retired Detroit school teacher who once told me God gave him a talent to make people happy through cheering. Louder! With people like Albert Bell, George Steinbrenner, Michael Irvin, it's easy to forget what sports are supposed to be about. The Brown never forgot. His philosophy was simple. Root, root, root for the home team. And wherever he is now, I'm sure he's got the Angels all organized for a victory cheer. You go! And that's exactly where he is, too, up with the Angels. He will be missed. Yeah.